Hi, everybody. My name is McKay Tebbs, and I am happy to be here today to share with you Pro Tools lesson number two, getting around in style. Um, today, we're going to be talking about things like setting memory locations, uh, customizing the colors that you see in Pro Tools. Uh, we're also going to be talking about zooming and all the different ways you can zoom and some uh, arrangements of windows that you have options of doing. So let's get started. Okay, so here is my Pro Tools session. And one of the most convenient tools you're gonna to need to learn how to use is Zoom. And usually when people start Zooming, they do it up here in this area where you have all these different Zoom controls. And those are good and you can push those and get different results. Uh, for example, these right and left arrows will zoom in and zoom out. That's important to know how to do, right? So you got to click on those and you can zoom in and zoom out. Um, another thing you can do with those two arrows is you can click on them and just drag and then click and drag to the right. And now I zoom in and zoom out just by clicking and dragging. And that's pretty nice. Um, right here, we have what's called the zoom toggle. I just clicked it and I turned it off again, zoom toggle. Um, some people call this ex the explode button because you see what it does to the track? It explodes it. So let's pick this track right here to turn zoom toggle on. And all of a sudden, I can see that track nice and big. Um, so it really helps if you have a certain track that you're working on. Um, that's nice. So, so you want to use that so you can just zoom in and see something really big and large for a second and then zoom, zoom out right after that. This next one over here is the single zoom tool. If you click on it and then click on your track, you zoom once and now I'm back to the hand. You see that? Single zoom. Um, the idea being sometimes it's annoying to have to get the magnifying glass and zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and then go and get the other magnifying glass and zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, or, or go back and get your hand. So this way you can just zoom once. And then over here, you have different presets. And if you hold down the command button and click on it, it will save whatever you're zoomed at for the moment to that preset. And then you get a different zoom angle and you can save it to those other ones. And so here's number three. I'm going to zoom out a little more for number three. Hold down command and click. Now I save that one. And now if I click on those, here's one preset going back to where I was for number one. Here's two going back to where I was for number two. And here's three going back to our lesson. So you just hold down command and click on those and you can store whatever zoom view you want to in that location. Okay, so that's all great, huh? But wouldn't it be nice if we could do all that without using the mouse and moving up there and clicking on it and just using a keyboard command, right? Wouldn't that save us so much time? You bet it would. So the first two um, mouse keyboard um, shortcuts I want to tell you is the T and R. T for zoom in, R for zoom out. I'm pushing T, nothing's happening. I'm pushing R, nothing's happening. That's because in order to do these keyboard commands in this edit window, we have to make sure that the keyboard focus for the edit window is chosen. If you look down here, you see an A to Z that's gold. And if you look up here, you see an A to Z that is not gold. And right here, you see one more A to Z square that is not gold. Those are the keyboard focuses, and it allows you to do keyboard commands in each of those three areas. Um, so right now, my, my keyboard focus is on my groups list. So I want to change it to be on my edit window list. And now it is. I used to kind of do that. But you could also just click on it. If you click on the keyboard focus that you want to be using, it will become active. Anyway, so it can be frustrating because sometimes you do a keyboard command and nothing happens. Make sure you double check and make sure your keyboard focus has been clicked for the area you're trying to work in. So now that I have that keyboard focus selected, now I'm going to hit T to zoom in. Well, that's cool. And hit R to zoom out. T, R, T, R. That is so cool, so awesome. So quick and easy, you're just hitting those keys. Another set of keys to do that is going to be command brackets. If you look on the right side of your keyboard, you have some brackets right there, um, kind of underneath your delete um, key. 
hold down command and use left bracket to zoom out and right bracket to zoom in. And so they do the same thing as the T and R keys. And it's another option of, of another way to do that. Now, remember that zoom toggle feature where you just click on it and boom, it explodes it out. You can also do that with the E button or the E key. So I'm going to click on this track right here. So that's the track that I want to be exploded. I'm going to hit E and now it just fills the whole screen. So you can hit E and toggle it back and forth just by clicking on E. It'll make it large, small, large, small. It's kind of fun to do these commands over and over. And, and so once again, I could also come up here and click it at the top of my edit window and go back and forth. Or I could just use that keyboard command, just hit the E key on my typing keyboard, and that will go back and forth. Uh, and then the single zoomer key, we have another shortcut for that, and it's the F5 key. At the very top of your keyboard, you have F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. And if you push F5, it will change your cursor to become that magnifying glass. You click once, and you do a single zoom, and then you're back to the hands off. So F5 for the single zoom. Um, another one to know is option A. If you click option A, it will zoom to the longest track in your session. But if I put option A, it will just automatically zoom everything out. So option A is another good zoom tool to know how to use and to know what to do with it. So anyway, spend some time working on those zoom keyboard commands to get really good at them. So T is zoom in, R is zoom out, T is zoom in, R is zoom out. E is explode or zoom toggle. E is zoom toggle on, E is zoom toggle off. E is zoom toggle on, E is zoom toggle off. Command brackets, command right bracket to zoom in, command left bracket to zoom out, command right bracket to zoom in, command left bracket to zoom out. Single zoom, F5, that F5 doing a single zoom, F5, single zoom, F5, single zoom. And option A, zoom out to the longest track. Option A to zoom out to be able to see all the different tracks. Okay, so anyway, that's the zoom. Um, let's talk a little bit about these counters up here. If you notice at the top of the screen, you have your main counter right here that I'm hovering over. And on this side, you have your edit selection counters. And um, you can um, type numbers in by clicking and highlighting and then typing the number that you want and then push enter, and then your session will jump to that spot. Um, you can do that also here in the edit selection count, uh, count counter, just by typing a number and then pushing enter. So that's uh, kind of cool, but there's another way to do it um, that uses a keyboard command, and the keyboard command is asterisk. You know where your asterisk key is? Well, you do have to have the number pad part of your keyboard. Some keyboards don't have that, right? If you have a short keyboard, you're going to be missing one of the main areas where you do a lot of keyboard commands in Pro Tools. So I do recommend you buy a full-length keyboard so that you'll have access to this number pad, which becomes very useful in Pro Tools. So there's an asterisk button here. If I push it, it automatically turns on that um, main counter number. So you can then use the numbers on the pad to type in something and push the enter or the turn button, and then it's good. So asterisk. Now, once I have uh, asterisk, I have the highlighted number there, I can also use the arrows on this arrow pad to navigate which number I want to write, uh, write in, which numbers I want to add. Um, so asterisk turns it on, arrows go back and forth, and, uh, and then you can you know, get around a lot easier that way. For the edit selection pane, the keyboard command is the forward slash. Right next to this asterisk here, there's a forward slash on, on top of the numbers. And by forward slashing, you can have access to the, those numbers there and be able to customize them and, um, and work with them. And uh, I guess it's also pointing out that the arrows go right to left if you push these right and left arrows. And if you want to move to the next number down, you just push the same key again, push the forward slash. Pushing forward slash repeatedly will get me from start to end to length. So anyway, it's important to know the asterisk key and the forward slash key um, 
Those are questions on the test. So you do want to know what they do and how they work. Uh, let's talk a little bit about universe view. Universe view is great because sometimes you're zoomed way into a session and you're just looking, you know, very closely at what you're trying to work with. Wouldn't it be great if while we're zoomed in, you could still have be able to see everything? And that's kind of what the universe does, is it shows you an overview of the whole length of your entire track. And uh, and right now I already have it on. Just turned it off. Let me zoom in a little bit. But one of the first places you can go to access universe view is right here. See this little arrow I'm clicking on to open up universe view? That is the universe viewer arrow or, or menu. And it opens it up so you can see it. So anyway, here it is right here. Now here's the cool thing about universe view is you click on it and automatically your screen updates to whatever area you just clicked on, clicked on. So I'm clicking on my universe view and now what I see down here in my edit window is, ref is reflecting what I clicked on. So it can be a handy way to jump around your session and get there really quick is instead of having to scroll, 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 or push the arrow and hold it down for five minutes, you just go up to that universe view and you just click the part of the song that you want to be working on. Another place you can turn the universe view on and off is right here in the, um, the main controls uh, customized box. And right here it says universe check mark or uncheck mark. So you can check mark it on or off just by, by accessing it right there. And another way you can see the universe view is by going to your view menu and coming over here to where it says other displays, universe, that can be another way to access it. It's kind of a slower way, uh, but they all work. You know, there's more than one way to, to do things. Maybe the best way, though, is by using the keyboard command. Are you ready for this? Universe keyboard command, option seven. By hitting option and seven over and over again, you can turn on your universe view and off your universe view. So anyway, universe view can be very helpful. So hopefully you'll remember some of these ways of accessing the universe. So next thing we're gonna talk about is creating markers and memory locations. Uh, first of all, I already have markers created in this session, and they are these yellow diamonds you see here, and I have labels on them. So my first marker is called chorus. My second marker is called verse. My third marker here is called bridge. So why can markers be useful? Because once you place them, it lets you know what part of the song that marker is marking. It's a, it's a marker, so you can immediately go there. So how do you create a new marker if you want to use a new marker in your session? All you do is place your cursor in the spot where you want to create it, and then push the Enter key on your numeric keyboard over here. There's an Enter key down at the bottom. As soon as you push Enter, it prompts you to create a new memory location where you have to, um, you, you get to name it first of all. So I'm going to call this, uh, Cool section of the song. You can also customize some of the other things about it, but basically after you name it, you just push OK, and then it appears right where you had your cursor placed. Another way to add markers in your session is by going to this marker ruler right here. You see how this ruler right here is called markers? And if you don't see the marker ruler, then you just need to click down on this and make sure that your markers ruler is active. You can turn it on and off, but it, it's one of the rulers that you have a chance of seeing. Um, so once again, place your cursor where you want your marker to be. And then right here is a plus button. You click the plus button and then you get that memory location box opening and you have another cool spot or another marker added to your song. Sometimes clicking that extra button is a lot of work, I guess. There's one more way you can do it, and that's by holding down the control key. If you hover right here over the marker ruler area and hit and press control, you'll see it switches to a plus sign with a hand that's pointing, and that means we're going to add a, another memory location there, and so it can be a real easy way to do it. Just control click wherever you want it. Um, so lots of options. 
The enter click way is also really, really easy. Just pushing enter on your numeric keyboard. So anyway, a lot of easy ways to add markers. Um, now, what if you want to recall markers in a hurry? And let's say you're zoomed in. I want to go to whatever marker number five is, but I don't want to have to move my screen to get there. You can just go period five period. And that's called recall, marker recall. So I just recalled marker number five and it automatically brought me and showed me where marker number five is. Here's marker number three, period three, period. Here's marker number seven, period seven, period. So that can be a really easy and quick way to get around as well um, and, uh, and, and to, to recall the markers that you have set in place. The next thing I'm gonna show you today is the color palette. So if you go up here to the Windows menu, you can scroll down to the bottom to where it says Colors Palette. And anyway, this is a great way to customize the colors that you're seeing. For example, if uh, you've got this clip here and it's green, but you'd rather have it red, you just highlight it and click, and then you can change that clip color. Um, right now I'm on this track number five, and if I want to change the number, the color of a track, you just click on the track and then click on the color and it will change the color of that track. So you can customize um, the colors of everything you see in here. And even if like all these tracks are purple, you can click the color and make it a different track than the previous ones. Another thing to know is this clips here, clips list is full of different clips in it, which you can also customize the colors for. Here, I'm gonna select this clip here I'm going to select red, and now that clip has been highlighted with a red. That's going to make it really easy to find that clip if I'm in this big list and I'm just looking for that red color because I know that's the one I want. So it's really cool that you can actually change the colors on the clips themselves over here in the clips list. Do the clips in the clips list need to be the same colors as the tracks? No. In fact, it's common to have them be different colors. So the clips in that clips list could be different from the colors of the tracks on the tracks list. All right, and the last thing we're gonna talk about today is arrangement view. Um, there's different ways to arrange the viewing of windows. Uh, remember in Pro Tools, you have your edit window, your mix window. There's also the notation view window and the MIDI editor window. Lots of different windows to juggle and try and piece together. Wouldn't it be cool if there's a way to make them all fit together nice and easy and so come over here to the window menu and you can go to arrange. Well, first of all, let's see what the title menu looks like or the title arrangement. So with title arrangement selected, now my mix window is the bottom part of my screen and the edit window is the top part of the screen. So it basically cuts each of those windows in half so that you can see both of them and work with both of them that way. Okay, and notice that you have different options as far as which view you're seeing. There's the, the tile horizontal view and the tile vertical view. The tile vertical view looks like this. So you have both of your windows vertically tiled. tiled, uh, tiled. Not very useful in the edit window really because it shrinks it down so much, but maybe kind of useful in the mix window. Um, you also have the option of the cascade view. The cascade view is the default view of Pro Tools when you first open it up. It's the one that allows you to toggle back and forth between the mix window and the edit window. Um, so generally, you're always in cascade view, uh, and, but you can switch to tile view if you wanted to so that you could see all those screens together. Well, thank you for coming here today and, and learning more about Pro Tools with me. Um, that concludes our lesson, so I'll see you in the next video.